Right, out again. I've uh, come up to lakes and I've gone to Horsewater. I don't think I've ever been here before. And um, you've just seen some of the footage I took on the walk in and since I've got here. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Really, really nice. So um, basically, the plan is a lot of sleep tonight. I am absolutely wrecked. Um, I drove here um, after work. I'm tired. It was a rough drive that. It was only about two and a half hours. But difficult to keep my eyes open. Really, really tricky. So yeah, sleep tonight. Already eaten. And then tomorrow up to the tops and do as many hills as I can be bothered to do. And then pitch at the top. Cut my down and I'd head home on Sunday. But this is it. This is my last last train. After this. It's the Wolds Way a week tomorrow. And then uh, I get back from that a week off. And then coast to coast. So uh, I've got boots that I've not worn very often that I'm slowly wearing in. But they seem pretty comfortable tonight so far. So hopefully that's alright. I think I'm rambling. Yeah. So I'll uh, possibly show you some more or possibly just go to bed. But um, yeah, hopefully it'll be nice tomorrow. But the view this evening is amazing. The view down Horswater is yeah, long week. Need this. Good morning. Um, <sighs> yeah, slept really well. Got about nine hours sleep last night, and I've uh, just smashed up Kidsy Pike. Um, just pretty steep. But um wasn't too bad, so hopefully in the summer I won't uh won't let these big hills get the worst of me. Uh yeah, so above here it's getting a bit cloudy. I'm going up into the mist and stuff, so whether it'll clear up later or this is a misty day, I do not know. But I'm hoping for some views from the top. But I shall stomp on and let you know what happens when we get up there. Yeah, I've had a long day. I've done a lot of walking. I think I only did about 12k. Um, but yeah, I've just kind of sat here. What time is it now? It's about 8 o'clock and I've sat here since about 3. Uh, I've read a whole book, which is pretty good. Warming up for the summer. Um, just chilling, really. But it's just nights nice about. There's no signal at all. So I've just been reading and just listening to the fish fly out of the water. Birds running around, sheep are knocking around, screaming as well. And the sun went down for me about two hours ago because it went behind the hill. So it might be a bit chilly tonight. But I've enjoyed this. It's been a while since I've been out on a two day, a two nighter, a bit of walking. So hopefully I'm ready for summer. But yeah, I'm going to have some food now and then probably get some rest. I'm going to try and be up pretty early and get home at a reasonable time tomorrow. So, you might see some more, you might not, we'll see. Right, and my food might be ready. Just just got just a little little lesson for you, okay? So, food on the hillside, you, you dehydrate your own, um, you take a gourmet meal up with you, um, or you do it properly. Um, so what you do is, Okay, so today I had four of these wraps I've already eaten today, so I've got, I've got two left. Uh, I've got some squeezy peas, 
squeezy cheese here. And I've got not one but two of the, the finest cheese known to man. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, is within these two wraps, I'm going to create just just a fantastic meal. Okay, so if you look at what I've got cooking over here, just just over, over here. So in here, what we've got is uh, look what we found meatball meal. So a little bit of protein for you there, delicious. And then in there, I've also put some noodles. So all you do is you stick the meatballs in there with just a little bit of extra water. And then when they look like it's starting to bubble and starting to get on, um, you just throw in a packet of noodles, stick the lid on until they start to go, and take the lid off to get rid of the excess water. And in a minute, I'm just going to pour this onto that. Maybe a layer of squeezy cheese. Maybe just the baby bells. Maybe I'll mix it up and do one on one, on one and one on the other. Either way, it's it's the best food you can imagine. Views not bad as well, yeah. So while the uh, while the meal's just finishing off, I'm just going to run you through some of the kit I'm going to take on the coast to coast. So on here we've got my uh, probably five, six, seven years old solo stove now with the solo stove um, pot. Basically, it's all a all the stove we ever need. I've gone back and forth with gas stoves and they're just not very good. The gas runs out, the screw doesn't work properly, it sprays me with compressed gas. Nope, I'm sticking with an alcohol stove or I'm just using twigs, which is exactly what this is doing. So that's coming on the coast to coast for me. I'll obviously be taking squeezy cheese and wraps for my daytime meals. Um, I've got a Montaigne 55 Grand Tour, um, which is probably the best rucksack I've had. An old dry bag full of food, a little meth bottle, two sig bottles this is fantastic this um a catadine um filter bottle i think they're about 30 quid but i've used a couple of filter bottles and the flow rate on that is amazing you can, you can fill up a sig bottle well in about 20 seconds um ugh. up kit carbon long um pole Got two of these. One of them's holding the tent up. Um, best thing about these is they are long, so I can put up my uh, Lavu. I can put up any shelter I want with it because it is a little bit longer. Um, taking the Lanshan One, this little bad boy, which for the weight is a perfect backpacking tent. And then in there, I've got a closed cell sleeping pad, uh, which is light even if it's not very small and on top of it I've got a wind hard down quilt which for the summer is all you'll need I may or may not take this little inflatable pillow simply because I imagine most of the time I'll either have a clothes bag or the best jacket ever made the Rab Neutrino which is probably about eight years old now um, to put my head on I've also got a little secret weapon as well because I'm always worried about not being that comfortable. So, I'll take one of these. I got this on eBay for about 20 quid. It takes about two breaths to blow it up. It's a little um, air mat. And basically on its own, it's not amazingly comfortable. I have used it in a bivy bag, but just on top of one of these mats, it just means you're just really comfortable. It takes up no space. And um, for its weight, I'm taking that as a secret weapon. Not telling my little brother, but he doesn't need to be comfortable. I think that's it. That's all the gear I'm taking. A little other random junk in that little bag there. A uh, little cup. Oh, homemade little candles. Come on. Uh, can I open it with one hand? Oh man, yeah, take a couple of these, been for about eight hours, enough to see around the tent, so I don't have to mess around with a head torch, that means that I have got a head torch, hold on, what's in here, a little first aid kit, I'll take a proper one, suntan cream, a little tripod for time lapses, ah, got my little Olight head torch, um, which I've only had about two weeks, but is amazing. So that's probably all I'll need. Um, that's pretty much all the gear I shall be taking on the coast to coast. Happy days, man. Ugh. I think without without water.
water, it should come in at about, I don't know, less than 8k, probably significantly less than 8k, and then a shed load of food. Speaking of food, I think it's time to eat. Do they do a mountain version of MasterChef? No, no, I mean, seriously, do they do? They do? Mountain feud with a view? So you often hear people talking about why do they come out wild camping? What is their point in going to the middle of nowhere? What do you get out of it? And people say, it's the freedom, it's the peace and quiet, it's getting away from it all, it's building a fire and cooking your own food. You're all lying. It's to do this. Boil some water. And use that boiling water to create hot chocolate. Now, the important thing now is which hot chocolate is the best? Now, I know what you're all thinking. In this vast world we live in, there can't possibly be one answer. There's no one overall correct answer. However, you're wrong. I have discovered it and I, uh, I know I'm right. So, I'm going to give you five seconds to have a think. What is the best hot chocolate? Okay, so that's your thinking time over. For the ones of you that got Galaxy Hot Chocolate, congratulations, you are correct. Everyone else, every other suggestion, unfortunately you are incorrect. Sorry about that. Uh, so I mentioned it a couple of minutes ago. Um, we have just got a new head torch. This is the uh, H1R Nova by Olight. Um, it's a well it's a head torch but it also is just a torch it also um comes with a little clip that you can clip onto the body of the torch and then obviously like tuck it onto your rucksack peg it onto your belt anything you want if you want to be you know more stable light it's not just looking where you're looking so that's tiny weighs nothing sits in the bottom of this little pouch that you get with it Charging lead that comes with it is absolutely mental. So it's a little USB lead, and that simply goes on the bottom of the actual torch. So it just magnetically clicks on. And this little toggle at the bottom, this little clear one, goes red when it's charging, and then it lights up green as it's fully charged. So again, all of that just fits in a little bag. You get with it, an actual torch comes with a little rubberized mount on a big strap that's really easy to just turn around so you can angle a torch exactly where you want it so obviously USB rechargeable it's got loads of modes on it the reason why I got one is because when I'm hiking even at night well you wouldn't use it unless it was night but it's got a moonlight mode on it, which is like one or two lumens, which means it lasts for about six days or something. Uh, at the moment it's locked out, so I can't turn it on in my bag, which happens quite a lot to me. So at the moment, if I click the button, it just comes on while it's clicked, and that's it. So if you knock it in your bag, you don't lose much battery at all. Um, and it's got other modes, it's got like a low, medium and high mode, which is like, I can't remember how many lumens it is, but it goes up to a turbo mode of about 600 lumens which obviously drains the battery much quicker. I think it's just less than an hour you get on full turbo mode. But for what I do, last two or three times I've been out, I haven't used a torch at all. Gym in the summer, I don't need to. In the winter, I still do everything I need to do. And if it does go flat, I've got a little banshee rank anyway. But yeah, it's really light, really weighs anything at all, really small, everything fits in this little pouch. So yeah, quite impressed. And if I manage to stay awake long enough, I might even show you what the, uh, torch illuminates when it gets dark but yeah lovely little torch and I got it on Amazon and I managed to get a 30% off using a voucher and I'm not really sure how I did that but um, it's worth checking out I know there's sales on Amazon at the moment so go and have a look yeah nice little torch absolutely tiny if you look like so I've got tiny little girl's hands so it's 
About the same size as my thumb. Good stuff. And this is my secret weapon. This is the Inertia X Lite. Little air mattress. So, shoulders, hips, knees, and then it ends. So, um, yeah, weighs nothing. Packs down absolutely tiny. And just gives you an extra little bit of um, cushioning. So this is what I use. Little Thermo SZ Lite. And then this little uh, bed on top, and I shall be really comfortable. Right gear. Yep, homemade candle. Morning, guys. Uh, it's about ten to six in the morning. Just had to bug out and get out there. And bug out is the correct word. In fact, the correct phrase is probably midge out. I've just been midged out. Open my tent. A leisurely morning ahead of me. I was just descended on by swarms. Swarms of midges. So that was fun. I think if there is a hell, it's probably like mid mid season forever. Covered myself in spray. Made no difference. I don't know what you do. So I ran away. Bravely. <coughs> Bravely packed up my stuff and legged it. And that's worked, because now I'm moving too fast for him. So yeah, should be down at the car in no time on the roads before any reasonable people are awake. Not bad. <sighs> this may or may not be the last thing you record. Generally at the end of these things, I just scarper. I never really say anything at the end. Oh yeah, and I'm doing an investigation. I've been wearing boots for about two weeks and the left one's been hurting the arch of my foot. And I've just discovered last night that the uh, boots have got insoles in them. Now whether they're the original ones, or I don't know, but I've taken the insoles out. The boots now seem a bit bigger, but they won't hurt the arch of my foot anymore. But are they now too big? Do we need to find some insoles in boots that I've already got that fit? These are these are quandaries. These are the quandaries that currently. I have, and also a very, very tight time constraint before I'm walking 200 miles. So that'll be fun. Right, onwards. Okay, boys and girls, my car is just down here through the gate, so this is goodbye. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Um, Next thing I'm doing is in a week, I'm doing the Walls Way with my dad. And a couple of weeks after that, I'm doing the Coast to Coast. So, next thing you should see, hopefully, is the Walls Way, and then the Coast to Coast. So, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been fun. Uh, I've enjoyed this one. Bit of time out, bit of overnight. Always good. All the gear stood up really well. I'm quite happy with the setup now. It takes about two minutes to set up. It takes about two minutes to put down. Can't really ask more than that. Just wish these mids would go away. What is going on? Right, and I'm signing out. See you later.